Really quick disclaimer before I get into this, today was dentist day, which means there's fluoride all up in my mouth, it still hasn't gone away, my tongue sometimes stick to my teeth, so I'm going to mispronounce things as I read this, and I apologize in advance. But without further ado, let's get on with Jinx's short story that came out today, The Wedding Crasher. Jinx hated petticoats. Corsets too, but she grinned at how she put the space under and within the stolen dress to good use. Her long blue braids were concealed beneath a ridiculous feathered bonnet that was the latest fashion in Piltover. Jinx sashayed between the wedding guests, keeping her smile fixed and trying not to scream at the dead-eyed people surrounding her. It took an effort of will not to grab each one by the shoulder and try and shake them awake. Jinx had come here to get all explodey with the observatory atop Count Sandvik's mansion, but when she had seen there was a wedding underway, well, that was too good an opportunity for mayhem to pass up. The Count had spared no expense in making his daughter's party a grand spectacle. The cream of Piltover society was here, the heads of major clans, lauded Hextech artificers, and even fat Nicodemus, who had managed to fingle an invite. The warden prefect looked like an overstuffed poro in his dress uniform, chest puffed out and beady eyes oogling the sprawling buffet table. Music from a small orchestra drifted over the wedding guests, so slow and ponderous it made Jinx want to yawn. She took the foot stomping, spin around till he made you sick music of Zahn any day. Hex lumens fitted the rotating zoetropes and oddly angled lens projected spectral dancers onto the floor that pureed and spun to the delight of laughing children who had never known a moment of hunger, pain, or loss. Mimes and sleight of hand artists moved through the crowd, delighting the guests with the finger work of their card tricks. Jinx had seen better. The sump snipes of the boundary markets would quite literally give any of these performers a run for their money. Pictures of Piltover's big wigs hung on the walls, painted with oak and inlaid with geometric copper fretwork. The men and women in the portraits looked down on the people below with hotly disdained. Jinx stuck her tongue out in each and every one of them as she passed, grinning as she tutted and turned away. Windows paned and colored glass patterned the mosaic floor with rainbows, and Jinx skipped merrily over every bright square as she made her way to a table heaped with enough food to feed a hundred families in Zon for a month. A liveried waiter passed her, bearing a silver tray of fluted glasses filled with something golden and fizzy. She took one in each hand, spinning away with a grin. Flying foam stained the backs of dresses and frock coats of nearby guests, and Jinx snickered. Drink up, she said, and knocked back what was left in the glass. She bent awkwardly and set the glass on the mosaic floor right in the path of oncoming dancers, and burped the opening bars of Vi's a stupid fathead, a tune she'd only just made up. Clicks of society ladies turned to sneer at her coarseness, and Jinx covered her mouth in mock, wide-eyed embarrassment. Sorry, I accidentally did that on purpose. She skipped on and helped herself to some weird-looking fish things from another waiter's plater. She tossed them into the air and managed to catch at least one in her mouth. A few fell into her enhanced cleavage, and she plucked them out with the glee of a sump skype, sump scrapper, I should say, who'd found something shiny in the ooze. You thought you could get away from me, fishy fishes, she said, wagging her finger at each morsel. Well, you were wrong. Jinx stuffed the food in her mouth and readjusted her dress. She wasn't used to this much up top and stifled a giggle at what she had stuffed down there. The hairs of her back or her neck bristled and she looked up to see a man staring at her from the edge of the chamber. He was good looking in a stiff sort of way and wore nice former clothing, but it was so obvious a warden that he might as well have had a sign around his neck. She turned to push deeper into the throng of guests filling the chamber. She reached the buffet table and stuck in an impressed breath as she saw the towering wedding cake. A frosted masterwork of pink fondant, whipped cream, and lacework caramel. A replica of the Tower of Techmagergy in sponge, jam, and sweet pastry. Jinx reached out and lifted a ladle from the punch bowl and scooped out a cave in the sponge. She tipped it on the floor and licked the ladle clean and tossed it back onto the table. She saw a number of guests looking at her funny, and she bared her teeth in her best manic grin. Maybe they thought she was mad. Maybe they were right. Jinx shrugged. Whatever. She reached down into her decluge, decl I can't pronounce that word right, I'm just sorry, and pulled out four chompers. She stuffed three deep into the hole she had just scooped out the cake and dropped the other in a punch bowl. Jinx strolled along the length of the table, pulling out two chompers and dispositioned them in various dishes. 
One went in copper soup tureen, and the other replaced the apple in the mouth of a stuckled pig. Her dress is a lot looser without the additional baggage upstairs, and as she pulled down the zipper, side zipper, Jinx spotted the good-looking man she'd seen earlier pegged as a warden, making a beeline for her through the guest. About time, she said, spotting another four guised up wardens, three women, and a man converging on her. Oh, you brought friends, too! Jinx reached around the smaller back and pulled the knot securing the petticoats around her narrow waist. The bottom half of the dress sank to the floor of, as her corset fell away to surprise gas of the men and women around her. Revealing her pink leggings, ammo belted shorts, and vested top, Jinx ripped off the bonnet and shook her hair loose. She reached down and swung fish bones up from where it had been concealed beneath her dress and hoisted the weapon to her shoulder. Hey folks, she yelled to the buffet table and drawing Zapper from her thigh holster. Hope you're all hungry. She spun on her heel and fired a crackling bolt of energy down the table to the chomper on the pig's mouth, cause this buffet is to die for. The chomper exploded, draping the nearest guest in ribbons of scorched meat and fat. The chain reaction of the detonation follows. The tureen blasted into the air and drenched scores of guests in hot beef soup. The punch bowl blew up next, and then the climax of the detonations, the wedding cake. The three chompers inside detonated simultaneously, and the towering confections launched into the air like a rocket. It almost reached the stained glass ceiling before it arched over and nosedived back to the floor. Guests scattered as the giant cake exploded on impact, and fondant fragments flew in all directions. Screaming guests ran from the blast, slipping and tumbling in patches of gooey cream and sizzling punch. Seriously, folks, said Jinx, blowing a loose strand of blue hair from her face. Screaming helps not at all. She skipped down the ruined buffet table and fired a rocket from fish bones that blew out the nearest window. Iron bolts from hand crossbows flashed past her into the bedded walls, but Jinx laughed as she leapt through the shattered window frame to land in the garden below. She rolled back to her feet and pulled up a short, or pulled up short, I should say. She had an escape routine sort of planned out, but looking through the Sandvik Mansion entrance saw a tall, gleaming ring rider that looked like it ought to be fun to steal. Now that I gotta try. She sung Flishbones over her shoulder and elbowed a hoist of gaping Sonvik footmen out of the way, settling into the disc runner's hand tooled leather saddle. So, how do you start this thing, she said, staring at the bewildered array of ivory knobs, blast rim dials, and gym like buttons on the control panel in front of her. Well, time for a little trial and error. Jinx hauled back the nearest lever and hit the biggest, reddest button she could. The machine throbbed beneath her, spooling with a rising whine and hum of building power. Blue lights sprung around the outer edges of the wide disc as the main doors of the mansion slammed open. Stern voices yelled at her to stop. Yeah, like that was gonna happen. The stable ladder strutted, reacted to the gleaming frame, and Jinx whooped a manic glee as the disc runner shot away from the mansion like a super mega death rocket. See ya, she yelled over her shoulder. Awesome party! And that was Wedding Crashers, the short story that came out, as well as the lore that also came out with Jinx today. Also, just kind of a side note, the Ring Runner, if you've ever seen the third Star Wars prequel, the thing General Grievous kind of rode in Utapau, that's kind of what they look like. They kind of have some artwork about what that particular looks like and Piltover in general on the universe page, which is where you can find both Jinx's lore, this short story that I read, and a ton more. But that's all for this video. So thank you for listening if you did listen this far. I don't know which video will be next, because life will be quite a mess. So till next time, take care from the Fire Godai FS.